Uh, so I want to talk a little bit about Bumble, um, how I got started, the team, um, and the ethos behind it. Um, I need to first start by introducing Rach. Uh, now, in early 2018, Rach was working here at Pottery Car Nature Reserve, just outside Doncaster. Um, and if anyone's been to Doncaster, you'll know that it's probably best to be outside of Doncaster. Anyway, um, no offense to anyone from Doncaster. <laughs> Um, so here she is, working hard, uh, grin from ear to ear, I can imagine. Um, so, this, uh, so she was on a traineeship called uh, Tomorrow's Natural Leaders, uh, which is put on by um, Yorkshire Wildlife Trust. And it basically um, empowers the, and trains the next generation of conservationists. And as part of this project, she had to come up with uh, something that engaged the um, local people and the wider public. Um, so she decides to do a magazine. This is one of the uh, spreads from our first issue. Um, and I, I thought it was a bit strange that she wanted to do a magazine because she's heavily dyslexic. But she talked to me and, and I kind of understood why she was doing it because this is generally what you see when you see natural history or wildlife magazines. Really text heavy, loads going on. Um, loads of big words, graphs and stuff, and it's not pleasant for a dyslexic person to look at. Also, something I hate is adverts as well. And this one, you've got, you've got an advert about advertising. And then this one, they're just, someone's just trying to sell their, their house. So it's, it's, it's really weird. And that's kind of where I come in. Um, I was, uh, at, at that point, I was in uh, Manchester working at a bookshop, a magazine shop. And I was quite bored and um, needed a project, really. Now, me and Rachel were, uh, knew each other from uh, university. Um, we both studied photography together. Um, and this, by the way, is, I probably don't need to tell you, this is a Western Siberian eagle owl, obviously, um, called Bumble, actually. I took this photograph a few months back, and he lives just uh, if you've got 15 minutes today at some point, go down to Newton Sinlow Village um, and there's Bumble and there's um, Bowie as well and a whole load of other owls and falcons. Um, so Rachel knew like a photograph, I knew that she could photograph. I was interested in graphic design, I didn't have any experience or, or qualifications but I was really interested in it. Um, I also... Um, uh, could draw as well, and I'd like to illustrate. Um, and we brought on Megan because when me and Rach started thinking about article ideas, we found that my, as you could probably imagine from this talk, my uh, uh, articles were very long, rambling, and she would say a bit boring. But um, and hers were like really short, snappy, informal, but really difficult to read on account of her dyslexia. So we brought Megan on. Uh, Megan is an um, English literature uh, graduate. Um, and she works, uh, she was on the same course as um, Rach at the, uh, um, uh, the uh, Wildlife Trust, the uh, TNL. And uh, this is another um, spread from our first issue. This is um, Megan's article that she wrote and illustrated. And her, she had a keen interest in um, mental health and the way that nature and being in nature can help your overall well-being and mental health. Um, so here she is uh, next to Rachel down there, hiding in the bush. Um, um, so yeah, so she's a really good illustrator and an incredible editor and proofreader. So she kind of knocked our articles into shape. Um, and after we got her on board, um, we started to figure out what the ethos and the mission behind the, uh, the magazine would be. So first of all, it, we wanted it to be UK focused, um, just because we were in the UK, we're based here. Um, it is a bit strange that we're doing UK focused because um, the UK is one of the most nature depleted places on the planet. Um, <coughs> But we also think that it, it, it's really important um, to know your natural environment around you 
and also people care about more about things that they can see. Um, and in this case here as well, this is uh, from issue uh, two um, about the noises bats make at night. Um, so it's, it's UK focused, but then we, we would stum uh, stumble across um, someone like this. This is Rachel Sussman. Um, and she is a biologist and a photographer, and she went around the world um, documenting and photographing all the oldest living things in the world. So on the right here, you've got um, a, an Antarctic moss, which is five and a half thousand years old. Um, so it's older than the, the pyramids. Um, and there's another, there's a, a yew tree that's in a churchyard um, that's so old that it, it predates Christianity. Christianity. Um, so this is amazing. So we, we thought, you know, we're kind of UK focus, focused, but, you know, we'll make some uh, uh, exceptions. Um, we wanted it to be clear and concise, um, easy to understand, easy to digest um, for people like, like Rachel with dyslexic, uh, who was dyslexic. Um, so uh, this is a spread from, uh, I think these both spreads from our latest issue, issue three. Um, so when we, when we deal with, with uh, graphs and uh, statistics and quotes, we give them enough space, we uh, make them really prominent, it's easy to read, um, a small amount of text for each page. Um, and we wanted to document important and interesting stories, that was, that was what we, we uh, wanted to do from the start. Um, this is one of them. This is the windscreen phenomenon. I don't know if you know about it. This was from issue one. Um, and it talks about the lack of um, dead insects on your windscreen after a long drive today, as opposed to 30 years ago, um, which is actually you know, bad, bad for insects, ironically. So we talked to Bug Life about, um, about this issue. Um, and Bug Life are a really um, important organisation um, just one of the organisations we wanted to promote. Um, we also had creativity at the, at the heart of this, this project. So uh, we include loads of artists, illustrators, photographers, and we wanted to promote them as well. These people are kind of quietly getting on with what they do, essentially saving the world around us. Um, this is one such project. Um, this is Rooted in um, the north of England. And what Rooted does is it takes uh, young girls from... Um, in a city, Bradford, who wouldn't have the chance to get out into nature, and it takes them out once or twice a week. Um, so we wanted it to be something special, something to keep. Um, my gran always calls me, and she's always like, "How's the book selling? How's the book selling?" And I'm like, "Gran, it's a it's a map, right, first of all." But we kind of wanted to, to treat it like a book, and we wanted it to, uh, people to keep it and to keep it on the bookshelf. Um, and we, we, we hated this kind of throwaway culture um, that we've got um, at the moment. Um, and so we wrap it as well, we wrap it nicely in um, recyclable, recycled and uh, or reusable packaging. A uh, little note for everyone who uh, buys an online order, maybe a little drawing if we've got time, um, and postcards and bookmarks if we have them around, stickers as well. Um, brings on, me on to my next uh, point. We wanted to be environmentally friendly. We were very aware that we are creating something that's uh, a physical thing, which is far more bad for the environment than doing a blog on a website or something. Um, and we, um, and we, we also um, print with um, Pure Print, who are the world's first carbon neutral printers down in Sussex, or sorry, or down somewhere. Um, and they've continuously won awards for their environmental credentials. Um, and also we kind of, I mean, offset's a horrible word, um, but we, we pack it with so much information and good causes and stories that it kind of offsets um, and the carbon we're making, uh, producing by making it. Um, so it's, it's at the heart of it, it's, it's not for profit. We didn't want to be a big kind of faceless uh, magazine publisher. Um, it's all about the, the, the profit and the, the money. 
Um, we didn't want to include adverts, which I talked about earlier, because that distracted from the articles and uh, our mission. Um, and, and so all of this uh, basically meant it is, it is volunteer run. So we don't get paid, paid for it. We, we don't have enough money to pay the contributors, um, which is not very nice for us. I think uh, when we get bigger and bigger, they'll be the first people to get paid. Um, and uh, yeah, so and this is kind of what, what we do it for. This is um, Rach in, in the Tate with our first, first issue. Um, and we've both been going to the Tate for ages, and to, to see our work in there is just you know, crazy. Um, and then uh, Chris Packham ran as a little postcard, uh, which was cool. Uh, David Attenborough, uh, good old Dave, writing to us, amazing as well. Um, and that's kind of where I want to end it. I just want to say, um, okay, <laughs> I just want to say on our website, uh, you can see, I don't want to plug it or anything, but you can see uh, issue one sold out. You can read or download the PDF online. Issue two is about to sell out. We've only got about 20 left. So when it does, we'll put it online as well. Um, and issue three is on sale, and as is issue two. Also on the website, we've got um, a, a, a list of all the people who have collaborated and a whole load of good organisations, artists and photographers and people. So yeah, thank you. Thanks for listening.